Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I know we had a company meeting just an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, as a matter of fact, but I appreciate you guys joining today. You guys are not going to regret it. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes? Okay. Yep, loud and clear. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. All right. Uh, if anyone can mute themselves for now, and if you do want to talk later, you can. We're gonna, There's going to be an open forum where during Julian's presentation, you can ask questions. And then he, you know, he'll be able to address them. So I'm excited to have Julian Yuen back today. The reason why I like highlighting Julian is because he's done all the things we want a new loan officer to do, to be successful, give everything they can to get more business, network, but start building their brand. And that's what you all need to do to grow your business. It's crucial. Um, Julian got his license. I'm not going to share a story. I'm just going to be quick, brief about it. But he got his license June of last year. He joined us in September, was it? End of August, September. It takes about a month or two months to onboard and start learning our system. So you're not really trying to network until then. And you're still learning how to do loans, right? So he truly started learning, uh, started going out there probably in like December. Um, and then he's already closed, like November. He's already closed his three loans in N County. He has a couple in the pipeline and many pre-approvals out there and he's reaching out to agents. So I want, uh, Julian's gonna share what he's done, especially as a new LO, completely new to the industry, has an engineering background, completely shift in careers, complete shift in careers, but he's honing in all the different things he's learned from his past uh, experiences and from what he's learned through our company and through other resources to become where he's at today. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna have Julian take over the stage and just share his process. And this is gonna be a lot of valuable information and please ask as many questions as you can. Uh, he's the right person. Uh, so why don't you take over Julian? Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Steve Kim, for inviting me back team. It is good to be with you all. Uh, as Steve mentioned, I, I actually took the exam in June of last year. And as soon as I passed, uh, started doing everything I need to do to get uh, authorization to represent equity smart home loans, which happened in August. So Steve's right, I'm brand new to the industry. I come from an IT background. I went to the best school in the university of the world um, to study engineering, but I realized that wasn't gonna be my passion for the rest of my life. And so I transitioned to loans. Uh, couldn't have made a better choice. Equity smart home loans is the reason why I'm here today. I was able to close three loans in six months exactly. Uh, and I've got uh, one in escrow and a few more pre-approvals for Dream for All, all that other good stuff. But my point is that I want to ensure and make sure that everyone here walks away feeling inspired, uh, feeling that they can do it, that is possible. If this nerdy looking boy that looks like he's barely out of high school can do it, so can you. And I'm going to address those specific action items to make sure we're all on the same track, okay? So Julian's I'm going to share my screen. 45, by the way. Julian's 45. <laughs> he may look young. No, I'm joking. He's not 45. <laughs> That's also sometimes a challenge, by the way, right? When you're, when you're networking, at least for me, I found that, you know, how do you get people to take you seriously? Especially if, you know, truth be told, sometimes I do look a little younger than I'm actually aged. So I have to dress a certain way, talk a certain way, match your cadence to the person that you're talking to, whether it's a realtor partner or prospective borrower, because it's a big transaction, right? One of the biggest purchases they're going to make. So that's something I'm going to highlight as well. Cool. Again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this is part for me to reflect, but also hopefully you can get some takeaways as well as I kind of travel back during my first six months. So really the, the main three objectives I wanna go over today are one, building agent relationships. You've heard this many, many, many times. I took it to heart when I first heard it from Steve, Pablo, Serafine, um, and I'm gonna go over some specifics, right? Specificity of what I did to kind of just build my network to the point where now I'm slowly getting folks referring their borrowers to me. Borrowers are referring their colleagues, their family, friends uh, my way. Also, developing essence. That's something we talk a lot about in the acting world. I also have an acting background. And a lot of times, the, the coaches will tell you, hey, find, find your vibe, your essence, your personality, right? Because that's the thing that's going to keep you grounded when you start going out into uh, different networking events, um, different you know, webinars, seminars, presenting yourself, how you carry yourself really matters. So we'll talk about how to apply that into the loan officer space. And finally, strength in communication. Um, we have to talk. We have to write. We have to connect, uh, not just at a you know mortgage interest rates level, but at a 
deeper human level. That's how I find that I can build trust really fast, sometimes in, in a span of five, 10 minutes of just meeting someone. So I want to share that with uh, everyone here today. Okay, let's talk about agent relationships real quick. And stop me anytime. I don't know why, Steve, every time I start doing these, I talk so super fast because I'm just so excited about it. So tell me to slow down, um, folks, if you need to, but I'll make sure I enunciate everything I talk about. Um, this third recent deal that I just closed on with my partner, Adam, we actually met over a coffee date, right? Uh, one of those coffee dates where I reached out and, and we uh, met out in Encino, I believe, here in California, and we just hit it off really well. It wasn't like, hey, Adam, here's what I can offer to you. It was more, and this is, I had coaching from Steve ahead of time. It was more like, hey, how'd you get started in real estate, right? Um, he, also came, he also happened to come from a film background. So we had something to connect immediately already. So he's telling me how, how he got started. What are some of his pain points that he experiences with some of his past uh, transactions? And I took note, I nodded, and then I was able to kind of address some of his concerns and what I could provide in terms of making sure everything's transparent. He's kept up to date throughout the loan cycle. Um, I'll be taking care of his bar as well and keeping both of them in the loop. And that's exactly what happened. Like if you read one of the recent reviews from Helen, the borrower, she, it, it went exactly according to plan. She was always kept up to date. I was never pushy. I really made sure she felt heard. And that was all from that initial coffee chat that he felt after talking to me that I'm a good listener. He ended up referring her my way. I have a question. So, go ahead. And so how did you even first meet Adam? Where were you? How did you approach him? And then and then from there, I know you built that rapport and then you did the coffee day, right? But how yes. did you even get to that point? What's the starting stage to even get to where, where the coffee? So to get to the coffee, you start with friends and family. So uh, I had a, I have a friend, um, uh, we'll call her T. She, uh, I met her many, many years ago when I first moved out to LA. And when she recently bought a home, she invited me over and we had a, another coffee chat, right? Again, in person, catch up. Um, I told her I just started doing loans. She said, hey, you should connect with my realtor who helped me buy my home, Adam. And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. So but again, don't be a secret lender, right? Rule number one, don't be a secret lender. Tell folks that you, you do it, own that, be proud of that because it takes a lot of work to get to where you are. And then slowly people gravitate towards you and want to help. And so when she said, yeah, reach out to Adam, that's when I got to do my own due diligence and look him up, connect with him, send out a, a text to say, hey, my friend Teresa uh, said you'd be someone great to connect with. And that's how he said, okay, cool. Uh, let's set up a, a coffee date together. And I remember specifically at the coffee chat, Steve, he mentioned that because I had mentioned my friend's name, Teresa, um, that he was willing to sync up with me. So for those of you, uh, whether you're just starting out or you've been in it for a minute, I would recommend going back into your, you know, what folks call the circle of influence. And you you, you never know, right? You never know. Even if, if they're not a homeowner, they might know someone who was a homeowner. They can introduce you, connect you with a realtor that represented them. I'm still doing that to this day. Like a lot of my martial arts friends, that recently bought homes before I was a loan officer, I said, hey, Kent, do you mind making an intro uh, to connect me with your realtor? And they're, they're happy to do so. Sometimes the realtors don't respond back to me. Sometimes they do. And when they do, I make sure I follow up in a, in a consistent way that's not too pushy, but in a nice organic way of like, hey, checking in, how are things doing? Here's a recent review from a borrower, so on and so forth. Wait, I have one more question. When you first reached out to Adam, did you text him or did you call him? I texted him first. I texted him first. And it just so happened that I was at a different uh, webinar um, that uh, he was part of, that I didn't know he was a part of. So when I saw him on there, I, I latched onto the opportunity to just say, hey, I just saw you in that webinar. By the way, my uh, friend Teresa uh, recommended I reach out to you, you blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it was text first, and then we met up in person, and then he actually just message me right now asking me about interest rates. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going well in terms of that relationship. I've got about four to five uh, really solid tight uh, realtor partner relationships. In fact, I'm gonna grab Boba with them uh, next week to just check in on them, see how things are going. And again, don't chase the loans, right? That, that's always going to lead to disappointment in my opinion. Chase relationships, build genuine authentic connections and the loans and business, all this stuff will fall naturally as soon as you're building the foundation for yourself. That's that's another uh, top tip that I always try to remind myself as well. 
the door knocking opens houses, sometimes they're a hit or miss. However, and I, I always tell Steve this, every time um, when I do go on an open house, uh, like a co-hosting that I've started to do a little bit more of with my realtor partners, they they see the genuine effort that I'm putting in, right? Whether it's helping them pass out flyers around the community, whether it's helping them put up signs, take down signs, whether it's being available to, to answer um, questions when some of the people who come through ask about rates, the loan process, so on and so forth. But they never do it in a way where like I'm in front of the door and trying to like, hey, hey, give me a minute. I used to do that during my first two months. Now, you know, I'm the supporting role. My realtor partner, they're the star of the show. I'm just the ensemble trying to make sure they look good. So if you can put that in the back of your mind in terms of like, hey, how do I make my realtor partner look great? It's going to come back to you uh, in dividends. So door knocking, open houses, I recommend uh, you reaching out to your agent partners or prospective agent partners and offering them as, as that as a way of like, hey, you know, don't you don't have to go out alone, right? Don't be spending time by yourself on a Saturday afternoon knocking doors by yourself. Like, let me keep you company. Let, let me talk shop with you. Let me strategize together. They really appreciate it. I, I, the, at least the ones I've talked to. Some, they'll ignore you. They're like, no, I, I'm, I'm busy. Don't bother. I like to, I already have my lenders. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but sooner or later, and I can speak it from my own lived experience, you will connect with one, two, and number of realtor partners that are uh, happy to see a hungry loan officer, a willing to support loan officer in their business, which will then support your business. Julie, really quick, we have a couple questions in the chat box. Do okay. Answer those. Uh, <laughs> skincare routine. I got to ask my wife that. <laughs> um, for I said, was Alan to, um, no, I wouldn't say not necessarily new for saw. That's a great question. He was, uh, been in for a couple of years already. Um, but I would say that he was one of the ones again, because of our shared connection that he was open to meeting with me. But as soon as he saw me like checking in that consistency, even before we did our first loan together, he, he could tell, like, for example, he when he saw me go to the UWM uh, trainings, right? UWM has those trainings where they fly you out. He saw that, the success track, and he messaged me. He's like, hey, really cool seeing you doing all this to continue growing your knowledge base, uh, finding ways to support your realtor partners. They, they recognize that, right? And so that was a really nice way for them to see, you know, kind of like be behind the scenes work and then be open to working with you later on. Uh, Gabriela, thank you for sharing Julian. Do you think having a husband as a realtor can be a barrier on getting leads from other realtors? Oh, that is a great question. Do you think having a husband as a realtor can be a barrier on getting? I, I, I don't. My point of view. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Uh, my point of view is yes and no. Yes, because agents want a reciprocal relationship where you refer them buyers or or sellers, and then they'll refer you customers as well. Uh, so yes and no, but. I wouldn't want off the bat if you're trying to be an agent, say that your husband is an agent. Later, when you get to know the agent, if it comes up, yeah, you could bring it up. But it's not something you need to share freely. It's, it really doesn't matter for you to share it. It's just like if you're dating someone for the first time and um, you know, if you're, you're going on the first date, you don't want to be too personal and share all this information and some of your maybe personal issues that you have. You don't want to do that. So not to say that having a husband that's an agent is an issue. You don't even overly overly disclose on the first conversation. It's just not necessary, in my opinion. Yeah, thanks for answering that one, Steve. And one other thing I'll just add personally is that agents, from my experience, they know your right whether or not you you have a, a relative <clears throat> that's a realtor or not. They know you're going to be working with multiple realtors, right? That that like they want you to, right? At least the the genuine ones. They want to see you succeed because that means you're doing something right. And then if they see other realtors working with you then it just speaks to your your work ethic, your ability to deliver, and they'll continue wanting working with you. So yeah, I, I would follow Steve's advice, but also don't, I, you know, I'm always about living your truth. That's just my jam. I, I you know, as long as you're honest, you, you live with integrity, um, that that's fine, right? If they ask about it, I would honest answer. Honest answer. I agree 100%. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't be untruthful. But yes, I agree. Um, for those of us who are dual licensed, should we have two separate business cards, even though we have to list the DRE and LMS license number? Uh, what do you think on that one, Steve? Uh, usually what I've seen is you have an, a card for a real estate and a card for, for loans, and you can pass both off or pass both of them out, uh, depending on the situation or one of each, I mean, separately. So it's good to have one of each, in my personal opinion. Nice. Uh, Clark asked about chasing referrals from outside the real estate transaction place. I 
I haven't actively done it. I know Steve always advises that, especially the financial advisors and CPAs. I've, <laughs> believe it or not, I chased down my hairstylist. My hairstylist um, is also, uh, his partner is also a realtor slash attorney, uh, in the state attorney. And so again, organic, right? Not saying like, hey, can you blah, 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 refer me? But it was more like, hey, this is what I do. I, 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 you know, I know your um, partner, Rob, is also uh, in, in the real estate business. Um, and I think he has some properties, you know, in Texas, blah, blah, blah. I also have my license in Texas. So we had a nice brief conversation there. And that was kind of a nice way to just build a rapport that way. So you just never know, right? Um, you would think like, hey, what does that have to do with mortgage? That has everything to do with mortgage, especially when they're self-employed, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that's uh, accountants, CPAs, financial advisors, insurance agents, et cetera. I think that's something Equity Smart Home Loans constantly reminds us to go after as well, to build that, expand out that network. And back, this actually goes back to the friends and family one. Um, this is one that I've, uh, again, don't be a secret lender. So my parents, they, they are in Hawaii, but they have a lot of relatives who are based in California where I'm at. And I always let them know that if you hear of folks in California, make sure you, uh, you know, boost me up a little bit, help me market, right? And and they've been doing that. And I've been getting um, contacted by like cousins, cousins, friends, so on and so forth about, hey, can how are rates looking? What's the mortgage process looking like? Sometimes I get texts at 10 p.m. I answer that um, and we have a conversation. So that's that's working in the pipelines in and of itself. And I'll, I'll circle back with you all in a couple months when I hit my one year mark to see how those pan out. Um, but they're, they're going in the right direction. One thing though, I will say this, and this is something I haven't really talked to Steve too much about. I find that family angle sometimes, you would think family immediately wants to work with you, right? Like your cousins, your aunts, uncles, <laughs> exactly, right? They're like, okay, cousin Jay, what can you do for me that the banks cannot do, right? So it sometimes feels a little bit more, you got to sell yourself even harder, but that's fine, that's fine. Here's the thing, those family members, if, if you can get them to work with you, I find that they've already been working with several realtors already, and that's the connection that you want to build. You're not just going after the, the, the borrowers, but you want to go after the, the borrowers, uh, buyer agents, and, and, and show them, prove to them that you can deliver on time. So sometimes it might take a little bit more work to, to get the buy-in from your family members, but once you get that done, um, you know, again, think long term, right? Long term is is that's what it's about. Don't try to focus on like getting an immediate, you know, gratification payouts and so forth. Uh, build those foundations so that those relationships can sustain itself after this transaction with a family member. Uh, Hugo asks, have you hosted any lunch and learn sessions with agents? So we are making agents to present to your C pushback host these. Yeah, so I haven't done like a formal lunch and learn. That that is something in the works. One of my agent partners um is Thinking of no worries. It's thinking of doing a seminar. Yeah. Um, Can everyone mute couple... themselves if you're not uh, talking? Thank you. Yeah. So we're we're planning on doing a a uh, seminar in in a couple months, like an in person seminar. So I haven't hosted like a formal in person lunch and learn, Hugo, but I did do a virtual presentation. I did do a virtual presentation to a real estate office. Um, was it? I think it was January. Yeah, Steve, yeah, we just came back in the new year, and that was part of networking. I had met them um, at at a a networking event. Uh, we had a great conversation, and then they invited me to one of their team meetings, um, and I did a whole presentation. I used the realtor pitch template that you can find on the Equity Smart Home Loan portal as my uh, guide, and then I just included some information about myself, about Equity Smart, what we have to offer. Um, I presented in front of 20 agents, y'all, 20 agents, my first presentation. But you can probably tell I'm pretty comfortable doing online. I do a lot of online teaching for the past five years in technology. So if you ever want to um, get together and practice hone your presentation skills, I'm more than happy to help on that. Uh, we're all part of the Equus Smart family, and Steve Pablo have helped me so much, and I want to be able to, to do the same for you all. If that's something you want to practice, right, getting out of your shell, your comfort zone to get better at presentation, pitching yourself. And then I'm going to blast through this real quick so we have more time to chat, but text, email check-ins. Uh, I was telling you, Steve, earlier, like I've never done so much texting, uh, email messaging until I started my career as a loan officer. And you just got to do it, right? You got you to gotta not text every day, but check in once in a while with your agents, write those emails, let them know, keep them updated what's happening with, you know, 
uh, not just mortgage rates, but you know what what you've been doing on your pipeline programs that you have to offer. You know the Cal Dream for All. I've got one in the uh, pipeline right now to get them pre-approved before the April portal opens. So that's just something you constantly want to uh, be consistent with. And social media, um, social media is 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 one that you know Steve and team have always emphasized. I don't have TikTok. I'm never going to get TikTok. That's just me being stubborn. But I do have the Instagram, and that's been slowly building itself uh, in terms of, you know, wins, uh, sharing information about loan products. Use social media to connect with other agents, whether it's liking their posts, commenting on the, their congratulations that you, that you, that they just listed something. <clears throat> One thing I've been doing a lot more is whenever I see an agent um, make a post about a lease that they're doing or. Uh, a listing that they just have, I always share that. So that's something y'all can do right now. Go to those um, posts and share it on your story because when they see that, I can tell you, when they start sharing my stuff, I feel so supported and loved. So if you share that love back, I guarantee you that they're going to acknowledge you, they're going to see you, and they're going to lean in a little bit in terms of like, cool, nobody else will share my stuff. You're so awesome to share it with us. Let's have a connection. 100%. You don't even have to know the agent yet. As long as you follow them, like and comment on their posts. And then if you share their listings, like Julian said, it's just going to build a strong relate. They're going to feel obligated to connect with you and, and they're going to start liking your posts and commenting on your posts. So you're going to gradually build a relationship that way. I said the same advice on my first video, which I recently rewatched. And my old self reminded my current self to do that. And I started doing that again. And I started building like two, three new followers every week. Um, just by doing that um, and, and reaching out to them um, via text and then following up on social media. So it's a really powerful thing. Um, it works. Don't take it for granted. Any questions about agent relationships? Okay. Let's talk about essence. Again, I don't want to get too mushy-gushy here, but sometimes we have to. Who are you? What are you about? What drives you finding your voice, developing a point of view, right? So these things are really important in my opinion, because it kind of grounds you from the moment you meet someone, whether in person, whether they call you, pick up the phone, how you even answer, how you go about addressing them, that speaks volumes to you as a person and as a loan officer. So by understanding who you are as an individual, right? What makes Martin Martin? What are you all about, Gabriella? Like, why are you doing this? What, what drives you to help originate loans? Why are you trying to help folks get uh, financing, et cetera, right? Putting the money thing aside, really find those, finding your why, in my opinion, really helps. Again, three coordinate points helps to identify your location. So if you can find those two to three values, uh, in my opinion, will help kind of just continue to elevate yourself, your business, and kind of like those vibes that you start spreading, right? The personality, how you, you know, meet someone for the first time at a networking event, whether virtually or in person. Um, so that's something that you, I would say, if you can slowly develop that um, every morning, think about, you know, why you're doing what you're doing, how you want to come off as, how do you want other people to think about you? I think about that all the time, and I find that it, it's been it's helping me quite a bit. Uh, iPhone says, realtors run from us because they get so many loan officers chasing. That's true. I, I agree. I, I see that all the time, right? When I go to an open house and I say, hey, I'm a loan officer, blah, 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 they immediately, some immediately stop talking to me. They're not, they're not even going to tell me about the property. And I don't take it personally. I don't take it personally anymore. But then there are some, um, and I, I do want to give a shout out to my wife. When my wife comes with me to some open houses sometimes, they see a family together. Even though I tell them I'm a loan officer, they, they still kind of have a connection with me, right? Because you never know. I could potentially want to still buy a single family home, which we are thinking about. And so that's always a nice way. Like I, I went to a couple of open houses last week. I immediately, to, I gave them a business card. Hey, Julian, Equity Smart Home Loans Loan Officer. Um, they saw it. This one didn't run away. Not all of them run away, by the way. I, I want to make sure everyone's clear about that. There are some that, especially if they've been in the business for, you know, uh, two to three years or even less, they are open to chatting, right? Because those are usually the folks who other lenders might be like, huh, they're not going to get any buyers, right? They're not going to represent any any uh, principles or anything like that. It's not worth my time. Those lenders, th that's great that they're thinking that because you're going to think differently. Your mindset will be like, cool, how do I support this, you know, one to two, three year experience realtor grow their business, right? How do I stay connected with them? And I've seen that happen, by the way, right? There are some realtors out there um, that I don't chase, but I present myself. I stay in front of them in a nice organic way every, you know, couple of times uh, throughout the month to let them know I'm still around. And trust me, when they call you and you pick up immediately or you text back immediately, it's going to set you aside 
set you apart from the other uh, experienced loan officers, those who don't feel the need to, you know, provide the extra uh, service. Veronica asks, uh, what CRM are you currently using? And that's a great question. I wish, you know, for a tech guy, you would think I have the latest and greatest tech uh, behind me. I don't have a formal CRM. I use HubSpot um, as, as, a, as, a, as a free tool to just track my uh, names and, and uh, emails and wh where I met them, any follow-ups. Um, yeah, and that's it. <laughs> that's something I need to spend more time thinking about for sure uh, to do uh, good follow-ups. Um, but again, we're all about disclosure, right? So full disclosure, I don't have like a formal CRM setup that's constantly doing things for me. I'm still doing manual stuff, Paul. Like I've got like a list of 50, 100 names that I, I'm still manually texting them like, hi, so-and-so, so just want to share with you a review, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes it's actually, you know, I find that effective. They actually respond back to me because they can tell whether it's an automated message or whether it's a personal message from yours truly. I find that yours truly personal messages I get back um, a response, whether it's like, hey, congratulations, great review, or, you know, or how are rates going, blah, blah, blah. So that, that's just me. How often do you send them email per month? I would say one to two, one to two per month for Saad. Yeah. Uh, Gabriela says, I am going to real estate office later today. What is the best approach? I would say bring, if you can, bring, out, bring a flyer, right? Bring a flyer of some uh, mortgage products, um, whether it's like I-10, DSCRs, some of the stuff that the big banks usually may not be able to provide as a way to differentiate yourself. That, that's what I would do. And I have done that in the past as well. Yeah. Uh, what is a good intro? What is a uh, intro? I'm guessing, yeah. What is a good intro when doing open houses? Yeah, I, I don't have one solid way. Again, I try to keep it fluid depending on the vibe, right? As soon as you enter a open house, you can usually tell whether or not a realtor is open to chatting with you. I've been to open houses and I think you all can relate. I've been to some open houses, like those million dollar plus homes where the realtors are literally just sitting on the couch. <laughs> like them and their partner, just, they're just sitting on the couch. Don't even bother to get up, greet uh, you or, or the people that are coming in. Maybe because they think the, the home is going to sell itself because it's you know low inventory. Um, they don't even choose their name, right? So I sometimes, most of the time, I don't even walk up to them and give them a card. Maybe I should, it doesn't matter. But the ones that are by the door, ready to greet you, address you, I always find those are a really nice way to give a you know a quick handshake introduction. Hey, how are you doing? You know, I I double check their name if it matches their sign. Hey, are you Priscilla? Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Julian, loan officer at Equity Smart Home Loans. And then give them a card. Sometimes they'll be like, oh, cool, great. Let me give you my card. So they see I'm a loan officer. If they give you a card back, you've got a first date, right? Most of the time, in terms of a potential coffee follow up. Uh, a potential uh, email follow-up, so on and so forth. I'm going to say the same thing I said in my first video. Do this, okay? Listen carefully. After you exchange contact information, whether or not you're about to go see other open houses or you're going to go back home, send them a text message. You got to text them. Don't email them yet. Send them a text message. I still do this. I did this on Sunday. Send them a text message. Uh, hey, Steve, uh, so great meeting you at your open house just now. I'm going to send you a follow-up email when I uh, go back home, when I head back home or something like that, after I'm done making my rounds, whatever, right? After I head back home, um, have a great rest of your open house. I end it there. Five minutes later, <clears throat> I usually 50, 60% of the time, I get back a text immediately. Great, looking forward to your email. Have a great rest of your day, right? Or great, stay safe in the rain, blah, 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 right? So I wait, I wait, I go back, I go look at some more open houses and I go back home and then I do send the follow-up email. And then... Once I send the follow-up email, I text them back again. Yeah, thanks so much. I uh, got home safe and sound. Just sent you a follow-up email uh, and also connected with, with you on Instagram. Uh, hope you had a great rest of your open house. And then one minute later, cool, got your email. Also followed you back. It works 50 to 80% of the time. Also followed you back. Uh, reach out if you ever need anything as well. So that's always a nice... Nice way to. It looks like you're getting a lot more. of questions. Uh, sorry to cut you off. It looks like you're getting a lot of questions, but why don't we get through the whole presentation too? Because I know there's going to be a lot more. Continue putting the questions in the chat, but I want uh, Julian to be able to finish everything before we address any additional questions you guys have. Sounds good. Uh, any questions about Essence, though, real quick? Great. So Essence is basically what differentiates you from everyone else. 
who are you? Why should someone, yeah. with you? why would even someone want to get to know you or even talk to you? Right. Mm -hmm. so it's also that, about per your personality, right? Your personality, what's your point of view on the world? Again, we don't have to go super philosophical, but you've got to have a point of view. Otherwise, if you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything. Write that one down, right? You can already probably feel my vibes as sensory, right? I'm pretty sure every single one of you right now would probably like be down to hang out with me at a park or something. We take a walk at the park, go grab a drink, and it'd just be so relaxing. It'd be non-pushy, super chill vibes. That's something that we all got to establish so that we can create that atmosphere, that psychologically safe environment. Because here's the thing, when the borrower is talking to you, I've had borrowers talk to me, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm really nervous about this, especially the first time home buyers. Like, I, I you know, I, sometimes I, I'm not sure about the monthly payments. Or I'm not sure if I, I'm going to find the right home or what if I find the right home and I don't like it, blah, blah. Like, what if I'm paying too much? Like, they're, they're going to they're gonna share your worries with them. And if you can create that atmosphere, like, hey, I get it. We're human beings. We're humans first, loan officers are second. They feel that from you and they they will of course they want to work work uh work with you all right communication how do we strengthen our communication right so again phone calls making sure you you, you pick up and also when you pick up how you come off your uh, uh come off on the phone right your tone don't ever feel like you're pushing anybody to do something they're not comfortable with right whether it's signing loan docs immediately or making sure that, hey you need to lock the rate right now otherwise like don't don't do that right Keep it calm, keep it grounded. That's something that Steve is constantly reminding me and I'm getting better at it as well. Um, when you're writing texts, emails, keep it concise, but also keep it informative, bring value uh, to what you're doing um, in this type of medium. When you're conducting yourself virtually or whether in person, right? Always look someone in the eye. We can practice that together, by the way. Look someone in the eye, firm handshake. Um, when you are, let's say they invite you down and you know, sometimes I had an event where I'm sitting down with a bunch of realtors, we're at, we're at a table, we're talking. For the new loan officers, you might feel like, shoot, do I even belong here, right? Am I even enough? What do I even have to offer? They probably work with many, many lenders before. But if you get to the point where you're just having that nice, you know, again, human first, loan officer second type of vibe, you can slowly ask them, again, be interested, not interesting, right? Be interested in their life, what they're about, how did they get into the business? Um, what did they do before? That's a really good one everyone here can latch on to. What did you do before? Most of the time, nobody started. There's a rare instance where someone started real estate immediately, you know, right, right at 18, right? So find out what they did before um, and see how they got into it. I've talked to realtors where they're like, yeah, I was my first home when I bought it. I didn't really like the real estate agent, so I figured I could do a better job. Like, hey, that's great. That's how I got into loans as well. My loan officer didn't do a great job, and I also wanted to uh, prove that I could do a much better job, provide a much more world-class five-star experience. You can connect on that. So many, many ways to do that. Tactical empathy. Steve and I were talking about this just now. Tactical empathy is, is a nice way to show that you're actively listening, right? So notice that when people were asking questions in the chat, I purposely read the questions out loud, right? I read the questions out because A, I want to make sure you feel heard, right? Even something like realtors run from us because they get so many loan officers chasing, right? So I acknowledge the question. I acknowledge your concern. I understand how that concern can be potentially challenging when we're trying to grab the business. And then we offer a uh, possible solution, another outlook, another outtake on things, right? So for example, you might have some borrowers that are like, hey, I'm, I don't know, the interest rates are really high right now. I'm not sure if I'm ready or I don't know if I can afford my monthly payment or, you know, uh, the tech market is so up and down. You know, I, I've, I've been hearing so many layoffs, blah, blah, right? So if someone says that to you, tactical empathy, the way you would execute on this you would say something like, great, yep, Hugo, I totally understand uh, what you're talking about. I was actually uh, let go a few years back when I first started in the tech world as a software engineer. And I, I remember like for six straight months, I didn't even want to go back home to visit my family because I felt just so ashamed of, of what happened, right? But later on, I realized like, hey, these type of layoffs, these, these turbulence, it's not my fault because I can objectively say that I always show up to work. I did things on time. And it's natural, right? It's natural in our human being to feel concerned when these type of things happen. And I just want to let you know that I would never uh, pressure you into any type of product program that would make you feel uncomfortable. So if you need to take your time with this, I'm right there with you. I'll be right, I'm patient with you. Um, we'll continue looking at rates, see how markets are going and just acknowledge those concerns, right team? That's tactical empathy. It's a powerful thing. It's not about tricking anybody into doing anything. It's about relating them relating with them on a human level experience. Uh, Steve Kim earlier asked me about wins and losses. 
I always try to prime myself in this whole idea of 24 seven availability. That's something uh, that Steve had, you know, drilled, instilled in us. However, I'll tell you a quick story. On Sunday, right? Sundays is usually when business happens for us. On Sundays, I was working on my garage. I came back in, made a smoothie. I left my phone outside. I left my phone outside in the garage. I make my smoothie. I go back to my phone. I see a missed call from one of my realtor partners. I called, I called it right back, obviously. It was just 10 minutes, y'all. It was just 10 minutes. I'm, so, I'm still a little bit bummed out about this. I called her back and she basically said, um, yeah, no worries. I, you know, I, I, I was on the phone with another client. Uh, they wanted to go check out a home um, that's, that's on listing right now. And you know, they wanted to also speak with a, a loan officer. So great that she called me first. I didn't pick up. I didn't pick up. So she called someone else. And then you know, a couple hours later, I see a Facebook post that from the loan officer that they met at the property. The, the loan officer actually met the home buyer. Um, and they're about to do a loan transaction together. So I'm trying my best to not kick myself in the butt on that. Um, I don't know if you heard that loss, Steve, but that was that was my that was my loss. Um, and I own that, right? I own that. We have our wins, we have our losses. You know, I was telling my wife about it. She said, you know, it's fine. She she's still gonna call you in the future. Don't let that one that one moment, that one time I don't have my phone on me to answer, you know, dictate the rest of your your journey. So it's all good. We're gonna have our ups and downs. I'm gonna learn from this, right? Now I've got my Apple Watch right by my hand. So even if I do misplace my phone for whatever reason, or if I set it aside, I'm gonna get alerted. But this is something, especially for the new loan officers, it's gonna feel uh, challenging sometimes to have this type of responsiveness. But Steve always reminds us that, hey, it, it only takes two seconds to pick up a call and say, hey, uh, so-and-so, I'm you know, wrapping up dinner right now. I'll call you back in you know, five, 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Or I'm at a doctor's office, which I was yesterday and I got a call. Hey, I'm just wrapping up a doctor's appointment. I'll call you right back, blah, blah, blah. Right? Just that responsiveness helps the realtors and borrowers feel uh, secure and comforted to know that someone on the other line is going to, to pick up. 100%. I have a quick comment. So when it comes to responding, especially if you're new to the industry, like Julian was saying, that's how you build your rapport. That's how you start building your relationship with these agents. I'm, like in the past, I worked at this mortgage company where they said, act like you're busy. Don't respond right away because it's going to look like you're busy and you're very successful. That is completely false. When you don't respond right away, it seems like you're too busy for them. Especially if someone's in the process of buying a house, you don't respond right away. It show, uh, it show, it, it makes it makes them feel like you have other things you're worried about more than their file. So when you respond right away, it lets them know that you're on top of their file. You're th you're you care about their questions, and you're gonna acknowledge it right away. Um, just you just need to re you don't need to pick up the phone every time, like Julian said. All you need to do is a quick hey, I'm in the middle of a meeting. I'll call you back, or you could be at a doctor's office. Uh, just let just acknowledge it and then move on. You can call them when you're free. But if you just don't respond for several hours, it just doesn't look good. And I'll give you another example. I had a loan officer that texted me a question. I responded to this loan officer immediately. And then they didn't respond to me for like two and a half hours. And I, that pissed me off. I'm like, what's going on? I took the time out of my day to try to help you. And you don't even respond to me in a few hours. I'm not trying to be petty about it. But that that's one of those things that you're asking me for help and I'm trying to help you. So it's just like when it comes to a customer, you, the customer is relying, you, relying on you as their loan officer. And by you acknowledging them and responding, that goes a very, very long way. And it, it gives them security that they know that the process is going fine and they can count on you when, when they need you. So that's my two cents on all that. Perfect. Yeah, it's all about that reliability. Uh, okay, cool. I'm going to wrap it up real quick. Uh, thank you all for your patience and engagement. This is something I, I was telling Steve, I try to anchor myself in, right? Ho, triple C, ho, triple C, humility, ownership, courage, curiosity, consistency. Humility is important. Um, like I said, I, I consider myself very lucky, privileged to, to have the education and work background I had before coming into the loan industry, but I never let that you know, blindside me as a way like, hey, I know everything. I never need to ask for help. Um, I always have this open mindset of making sure I still have a lot to learn, right? Even if it's, I mean, I literally asked Steve the other day about um, impounds, escrows, right? Because most, the first two loans didn't require that. Um, or the first three did not require that. And then now I'm, I face a scenario where we all learn it in the textbooks, but when you're like really in the groom of things, you kind of forget stuff or you're not sure of stuff. So always have that open learner growth mindset and don't be afraid to ask for help. Ownership, this is so important. 
right? We're all here right now. We're all learning. We're here every week. We're busting our butts. That's good. You take pride in that. But if there are some times where you know you should be doing something, but you rather choose not to, then you also got to acknowledge that and be like, yeah, there's a reason why I'm not getting business for whatever reason, because I didn't make that phone call or I didn't go that extra mile to help out a borrower, so on and so forth. Uh, Farzad, conventional, all conventional so far. We'll see if I can do some bank statement loans later down the line or, or uh, FHA, VA. That's a great question though, right? What type of loans uh, have you closed? Sometimes we don't, you remember earlier, what, what was that? Courage, curiosity, consistency. Oh, um, there was one thing I said about the communication. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. But my point is, oh, the essence. Don't feel the need. Oh, be interested, not interesting. Sometimes when we try to be interesting, hey, I can do these type of loans. Hey, I can do X, Y, Z. Hey, like you try to come off too strong sometimes might backfire, right? So what I've tried to do right now is that, hey, I've been closing conventional loans uh, 21 days or, or sooner in terms of escrow. These are the things I can do as long as they have a 620 uh, credit score, they've had two year work history. Um, and uh, what was the third thing? Oh, at least a 3% down payment. We, we, can, we can get a deal going, right? So keep that, I learned that from UWM, keep that really short and sweet. When you have that singular focus, instead of trying to be too broad, especially when you're starting out, I find that uh, very helpful. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, courage, curiosity, consistency. Courage, we all need that as loan officers because we're gonna face a lot of rejection. I definitely faced a lot of rejection in my previous career as an actor. So if you can overcome that and just realize, switch your mindset of it's not a no, it's just a not yet, you will get that first and subsequent loans. Don't get me wrong, when I closed my first loan uh, back in October, I thought that was beginner's luck. I was so scared that like I might not get another loan ever again. All those insecurities came up. But I did a great job on that first loan that the realtor partner uh, for that first loan referred me to her colleague um, in the Fresno area. And that's how I got my second one. I do, I do speak uh, Mandarin and Cantonese. That has been my strength. I advertise that. I market it. I utilize it. Um, and, and, and I own that. And I find that to be very... Uh, beneficial, especially for those home buyers who, who may speak some English, but they're more comfortable with speaking uh, with someone who in, in their native tongue. So if you speak you know, Spanish or a different type of language, uh, I would make sure everyone knows that. And again, consistency. Oh, I said it right here. Be interested, not interesting. Yeah. So you all know what that's about. And finally, consistency, right? You, you got to uh, make sure you're doing the practice. Does, practice does lead to progress. I know it sounds very fluffy, fluffy, but I've, I'm starting to realize that, wow, in my first six months, by really being intentional with what I'm doing every day, Steve mentioned this morning at our company meeting, all hands about making sure you have goals, right? What are you doing at the top of the morning? Do a retrospective with yourself, like I'm doing right now. What did you do well? What did you not do well? I didn't do well by picking up that phone on that Sunday, so I'm going to have my phone glued to my butt every weekend now. Make sure you're doing the same thing, right? Um, so that you can continue getting better. And that's it. Thank you all so much. I feel so privileged to be able to chat with you all. Uh, we all know what we are in for. We signed up to do this job for a reason. Keep that as your anchor point. Um, I'm sticking around for as long as I can. I love this industry. It's only been six months, but it's a lot of fun. I love helping people get homes, seeing them happy, especially when they feel like because of me and my care and my patience and all that stuff, they they feel comfortable moving forward with purchasing a home. So find your essence. Find your voice. And if you ever need anything, let me know. I'm available 24-7. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. There are still some questions, but I do want to add one thing. So uh, Julian, it's not like we have a special relationship where I start reaching out to him all the time. He's actually, always, he reaches out to me whenever I ask a question. I always tell the loan officers, you guys, I'm available literally 24-7, not only for my customers, for you as my our LO partners. So utilize me, call or text me. I respond every time. Justin Batinsky, he's one of our managers now. He's consistently been one of our top producers, been in the industry for three and a half years. That's not that long in the grand scheme of things. He's had over 40 reviews in the last two years each year. And he would do the same thing. When he was starting out, he would literally contact me, call me, text me like four or five times a day. He would reach out to Pablo with questions. Don't be afraid to reach out to me. I will be there for you. Any sort of question you have, aside from LO support, reach out to me and I'll be happy to respond. 
And um, I'm going to give back what you bring in. So what you put in, I will give back, in other words. So just hold on to my number, text me or call me. Now let's address some of these questions. Um, let's take a step back. Uh, let's Peter, uh, let me see. Peter has a question. Have an AE wait, or have a, a, a text ready on the other line? Call. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's just re talking about how to respond. Um, what types of loans did you close? Julian Farzad is asking that. Yeah, yeah, I addressed it, uh, conventional loans. Oh, okay, you already addressed that, okay. Uh, 15 year and 30 year, yep. Could any of the LOs reach out to you individually if they have questions? Yes, anytime, available 24 seven. Uh, the contact information that Steve sent out in the initial email, that's, uh, that's my direct number. Perfect, so, so I guess the biggest take takeaway is a couple things. Be yourself, uh, try to befriend these people and, and be different. You know, don't do the same approach like Julian mentioned. Don't just say, hey, I have the best rates. I can close your loan fast. If, if you can't do those things, you can't get the best rates. You, you can't close a loan fast. You shouldn't be doing loans to begin with. So those should those things should be a given, not uh, not it shouldn't be a positive. It should be a thing that is, it's already expected. Right. So you got to do the additional things that's going to set yourself yourself apart, such as responding really quickly such as uh, following up and checking in and being there for your, not only your customers, your agents, whatever they need. I actually have a story. I, there's an, a cu customer that called me on a Sunday. It was like, I forget. It was like 2 p.m. on a Sunday. And I picked up the phone. It was a referral from a friend of mine <clears throat> that I didn't even know he referred me. He didn't even tell me. But I actually got, uh, I took the application then and there. And then we started, uh, we, we, we got her pre-approved and then she actually put an offer, got, offer got accepted at the end of the week. She said, the reason why I work with you, Steve, is because I called three other loan officers before I called you. You are the only one that answered the phone. So be, be available. Our job, literally, our job is what we put in, we get out of it. We don't get a salary, right? We get paid based upon our commissions. So you got to make sure that treat this job as something that you got to do 24 seven, obviously don't neglect, neglect your family and don't have your own, you got to have your own life on top of that. But it's, it's always easy to just quickly respond and say, Hey, I can't call you until later tonight or tomorrow. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of something. That's all they want to hear. They just want a quick response and it'll go a very, very long way. Um, anyone else have any additional questions for Julian before he hops off any comments? Oh, far yeah, side question. question. Yes. My question is, I tend to call realtors during the week, like Monday through Friday. Do you also call in, if there's a realtor that you're not doing business with, do you ever call them on the weekend? I'm just curious about that or text them, whatever it might be. Yeah. Great question, Ronald. So if I uh, have, have not done business with the realtor yet, I'm trying to build oh, a relationship. relationship. If mm -hmm. I'm trying to build a relationship, would I call them on the weekend? I have not yet. I have not yet. Uh, two main reasons. One, they're probably doing open houses or preparing listing presentations, so on and so forth. If I were to reach out, I would usually reach out via text, which I've done before on a weekend, um, to let them know, like, hey, you know, hope your hope your week went well. Let me know if you need any quick pre-approvals for any of your potential borrowers, buyers. Um, and or I would just connect with them on, on social media, right? Like send them a message or comment on something just to just to stay in front of them. Thank you, Julian. Yeah, you got it, Rhonda. I would say my personal opinion about that is, you know, wheelchairs are already busy to begin with when it comes to weekends and the days that they have their time to spend with their family and not have to do an open house or uh, show homes to uh, potential buyers. I try to give them their free time on weekends. I, I try to follow up on weekdays when it comes to agents and following up and trying to build rapport. That's my personal opinion. So I could give them their own time on weekends when they have the time to enjoy whatever they're trying to do. Thank you, Steve. No problem. Anyone else have any questions before we wrap this up? Our all right. Hopefully, we you guys got a few takeaways today. I I know I did. Um, there's a lot of things that you could learn from different people. Uh, there, I'm always learning. You're always got to learn. Even though someone's new to the industry, it doesn't mean they have different things that they can't share that you didn't think of. And I'm constantly trying to get bits and pieces of, of different people's perspectives and utilizing my own life. 
So I'm glad you guys all made it to this call. It will be on MySHL. So if you missed part of it, you can hop back in. Uh, reach out to Julian. If you, have, if you have questions, reach out to me anytime. We are here for you. Uh, use LO support at equitysmartloans.com for any general questions. Use the LO, uh, the LO uh, scenario desk. LO scenario desk in MySHL if you have any scenario questions because it will go out to 15 to 20 of our top lenders. They'll contact you directly. And then call me or text me. Text is better. If you have specific questions for me, you have any questions, text me. I actually have four, four return calls I have to do after this, uh, this presentation today for other LOs that had questions for me, but I'm going to be responding to them. So other than that, thank you again for joining. I hope you have a productive rest of your Wednesday and rest of your week, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Julian, for your time today. You're very welcome. Feel free to right. reach out, team, if you ever need a, a pep talk, motivational mindset, you want to role play anything, I got you. Much love, everyone. Peace.